Hi, I'm Adrian Martin, author of Mysteries of Cinema from University of Western Australia Publishing. I've been a film critic for over 40 years of my life and I've written everything from 50 word capsule film reviews in newspapers to 20,000 word in-depth analyses of films. I was a film reviewer for the Age newspaper in Victoria for 11 years. More recently, I've done a lot of audio commentary work for films on DVD and Blu-ray. But this book, Mysteries of Cinema, is not a collection of my film reviews. It's an essay collection, essays written between 1982 and 2016. And in each one of these essays, I take an idea, a central theme, perhaps a genre of film, perhaps a cultural fad or obsession. And I try to track that through a vast range of movies, everything from popular Hollywood blockbusters through to short experimental films, documentaries, trash cinema, anything that actually gets my attention, that, uh, that arouses my fascination in cinema. A lot of the essays in Mysteries of Cinema are not easily accessible because some of them began in small cultural magazines of Australia in the 1980s and 90s. And these kinds of spaces for writing gave me an opportunity to experiment with, with different addresses, different tones, different techniques. I'd like to read you an example of an essay that I wrote in 2004 originally for the literary magazine Heat, and it's called My Back Pages. And it begins with this recollection. In 2003, I found myself at Lingnan University in Hong Kong to speak at a conference on action cinema. What better occasion to reflect on the work of cinematic editing in all its forms, from the blazing guns and flying fists of blockbuster movies to the stridently flickering visual assaults of the avant-garde. The kinetic kick of the clipside minutely studied obviously possessed me. In the course of my improvised remarks, I dared use the words pure cinema in an effort to capture and name what was so unique and exciting about these dizzy highlights of screen action. It was an unwise move. Everyone, even my best friends, felt compelled to tell me publicly, on the spot, or privately afterwards, that there is no such thing as pure cinema. The cinema is gloriously impure, as theorists from André Bazin to Alain Badiou have no doubt proved. It offers the amalgamation and transformation of all the other arts and media. More dramatically still, there is nothing in any film worth describing as specifically cinematographic. The search for cinematic specificity, so goes the critical lecture, is a dangerous dream, a delusion dragging us back to the reassuring fancies and fallacies of art for art's sake. Retreating into the pleasure of pure cinema is a way of avoiding the messy impurity of the world, of culture, of history and ideology. Bazan gently mocked those purists who nostalgically look back to the good old days of silent cinema, or cinema with a capital C, as he called it. And now, according to the modern academic wisdom of Anglo-American cultural studies, cinema is merely a mobile, audiovisual assemblage in the flux of the society of spectacle. The cinema reminds us of what Raymond Chandler said about marriages and newspapers. Above all, never forget that a marriage is in one way very like a newspaper. It has to be made fresh every damn day of every damn year. I know all of this. I know it. I recognise the truth of the arguments in favour of an impure, multiple, contaminated, promiscuous cinema. And yet, Sergei Eisenstein believed in defining the specifically cinematographic, and Alfred Hitchcock, with Brian De Palma trailing, eulogised what he called pure film. Were they wrong or deluded to do this if it drove their own cinematic imaginations and creativity? For myself, on that suddenly very lonely day at the microphone in Hong Kong, I could take recourse only to an impulsive coup de cour. 
Cinema is not just any old piece of cultural machinery, interchangeable with all the others, I asserted. If it were, why would any of us be here talking about it, studying it? If there isn't something cinema can do that no other art can do, and if we didn't feel this force that it wields, why would we even bother with it? There was mostly silence in the room after that, with some grim and disapproving looks from my colleagues. Some gazed upon me with a nervous parental concern, as if I had just revealed myself to be disturbed or maladapted. But a couple of fresh-faced young film students standing modestly at the back of the room seemed to enjoy my outburst, and their eager smiles instantly took me back about 25 years. Well, Mysteries of Cinema is a book that I think can be read by a wide range of readers. People who want to discover films, people who are already into cinema but want to go deeper with the exploration of ideas and different types of films, and people who more generally are interested in cultural essays, thinking about our contemporary culture. I hope you enjoy Mysteries of Cinema.